Welcome to the first Keyshot webinar of 2015. And today we have some very exciting content to present to you, uh, thanks to the highly anticipated release of ZBrush 4 R7, uh, and also the Keyshot for ZBrush, and the ZBrush to Keyshot Bridge. So today we're talking about three different products um, that all are integrated together. Uh, my name is Rex Roberts, and I'm the UX design lead here at Luxion. To get started in the webinar, I'll be covering some of the essentials of just downloading, installing, and licensing Keyshot for ZBrush. And when I'm done, I'll pass the controls over to our super talented guest presenter, Nick Hyatt, for him to demonstrate uh, how he uses ZBrush and Keyshot and um, the bridge and how it all in integrates together. Um, so like I said, in addition to being our webinar guest presenter, Nick is also our featured artist of the month. Uh, you can check out his interview in our January newsletter and his hugely impressive portfolio at nickhyatt.com. Um, I posted a link to the interview in the chat section and that also has a link to his website here where you can see some of his phenomenal work um, such as these ships which I believe he'll be using to demonstrate today. Uh, we also have Josh Mings, our marketing director, here with us fielding questions so feel free to ask away and we'll leave some time at the end for a quick Q&A, uh, probably just have time for the most common questions um, so yeah, go ahead and post any of your questions uh, to the board there. And it looks like uh, many of you are already uh, having some questions, so that is great. Um, if you do have to leave the webinar early or want to watch it again, a recording of the presentation will be available to view at any time uh, at your convenience at youtube.com slash keyshot3d. And here you can also find a number of other tutorial videos, um, quick tips, and uh, older webinars that were recorded. Um, okay, so let's get started with uh, some download, installation, and licensing information of Keyshot for ZBrush. So the first thing to know is that sales and trials of Keyshot for ZBrush are done through Pixelogic. Um, so if we go to Pixelogic or store.pixelogic.com, you can see uh, on the opening screen here, there's a little splash for ZBrush to Keyshot Bridge. So if we click on that, um, then we're brought to this page here. We can select uh, which type of license that we'll be using. So in this case, most of you will be using uh, single user licenses, but also uh, volume licenses and floating licenses are available. Um, so once we get into the single user license screen here, you can see uh, the three different product options we have. Um, so if we go down the list here, you can see we have the ZBrush to Keyshot Bridge uh, for Windows and for Mac, and then Keyshot for ZBrush. Um, so this is your Keyshot application here, and these are the bridge applications which will integrate your current installation of ZBrush with Keyshot. Um, so you basically have two options um, for Keyshot. Uh, one is this, uh, this offered uh, by ZBrush and it's at a limited time offer of $249 if you bundle the bridge uh, with Keyshot for ZBrush. Um, so here, if you read some of the fine print, uh, it'll just ask you to add um, both of these to your cart. So you'll add Keyshot for ZBrush and uh, whatever platform you'll be using it on, um, add the bridge to it as well. Um, if you already own Keyshot, then there's no need for you to purchase the Keyshot for ZBrush license. Uh, you'll simply need the bridge, which will tie the two together. 
Um, so this version of KeyShot for ZBrush is basically the same as KeyShot HD, uh, except for two main changes. One is that you have unlimited rendering resolution, um, but you do not have any of the importers. So you cannot import any other native CAD files. You'll only be able to transfer your ZBrush data over to KeyShot. So if you need more flexibility um, and you need uh, the importers, if you'd like pro features such as passes or the HDRI editor, uh, then you'll want to upgrade to KeyShot Pro, which can be done through Luxion. So uh, if you are interested in upgrading your KeyShot for ZBrush to KeyShot Pro, just contact sales at Luxion.com. Um, so like I said, in the end, there are three products, and this means you'll have three different serial codes to enter. Um, so the first serial code will be for ZBrush. Um, they provide some very thorough instructions, so as you go through this purchasing process, um, all those instructions will be provided. So you have the one license for ZBrush, one license for KeyShot, and then as you send over your data from ZBrush, the first time you'll be prompted to enter your third serial code for the ZBrush to KeyShot bridge. And once you do that, you'll be all set to uh, model and render your data, uh, as Nick will be demonstrating to us now. So let me pass it over to him. Okay, I've made Nick the presenter now. Uh, I can see Hi. your screen. And right. I can, can hear me? Huh? Yep, cool. Great. Well, uh, thank you everyone for attending, and thanks Rex and everybody at KeyShot. You guys are great. So uh, today I have a really easy job. I'm going to show you this pipeline to go from ZBrush to KeyShot, which is super simple and very, very powerful. So <clears throat> today, this example, I'm going to show you this, sh uh, this concept ship I built, and uh, we're going to test this pipeline out on a really high poly count. This is 24 million polys, way too many, but I haven't cleaned this model yet, so we're really going to test it out and show how actually you can transfer that much data really quickly. So first thing you do, you have your model, you're all set to go, even all your sub tools, everything like that. So just go to your render tab and go to your external renderer, activate key shot here, and then we can go over these settings here later, but the main thing, activate key shot, and then simply press the BPR button, and then it'll start to process your render as you can, or process your model as you can see here, and then just flip over to key shot, and you can see that it's already importing. And like I said, this is a really huge model. I haven't cleaned it. It's 24 million polys. And you can see how fast it goes, even with that many polys, which is amazing. So with a model that's you know, not 24 million polys, it goes so fast. There we go. So now we have our, our model from ZBrush into KeyShot. So now we can do all the standard uh, settings here in KeyShot. You can change your environment variables. You can pick this HDRI map, adjust your lighting inside of here, your brightness, your contrast, etc. So, okay, so you can endlessly tweak this thing in ZBrush. You can add different material, or sorry, in KeyShot. You can add different materials to it now. Drag your materials onto each different subtool. And also inside of here, once you have your model in here, you still have the ability to go into your scene and edit each individual subtool as its own piece. So you can see the subtools in here. So let's say, for instance, you wanted to go back into ZBrush. You've done your, your material editing. You've done your lighting. You've tweaked a few things. And uh, you're, you're ready to come back into ZBrush and do some more sculpting. So that's very simple. Just pop back over to ZBrush. And let's just pick one little subtool here. And let's just say I'm going to translate this guy down, right? So now I, ha I have that moved. And I want to bring this change back into KeyShot. Super simple. Just go back to your BPR button, press it one more time, and you can see it starts to process. Then flip back to the key shot and just wait for it to process. And on a model, again, that's not 24 million polys, it's super fast. There you go. 
So now you can see our model is updated. And uh, that's a, it's a really quick way to get back and forth. So any tweaks you make on the fly in ZBrush, it's so fast, so easy to kick it right back into Keyshot. And then apply your new materials to your model, start testing out lighting scenarios, et cetera. And also one really good thing, too, is you can pick your camera angle. And typically what I do for concept art, I don't go too far in the, um, in the uh, ZBrush phase as far as texturing and painting goes, because I'm going to do most of my painting in Photoshop. And that's just for concept models. If you're doing an actual 3D model for production, you'd want to go further. But for my case, I, I typically just pick a cool camera angle. I change the height of my HDRI dome, get something that looks good, rotate it around a bit with your settings, and then I'll save this camera so I can easily come back to it at any point in time and uh, have the same camera view. If I make a model update in ZBrush, I don't lose my camera. So when I bring this render into Photoshop, I always have the same view and the same angle and I can continue to paint while I model at the, in the same time. So if you like this camera, make a new camera here, and then just make sure to toggle the lock on the camera so that you are locked to this particular view and you can't move it around. So, oh, well, I didn't toggle it. There we go, so now it's locked. Okay, so now let's say that covered, we can still model in ZBrush and very easily kick it back to Keyshot. So now let's do one more quick thing in ZBrush, and I will do some really quick poly painting 